Welcome back everybody. It's friggin' the day after Christmas and today I'm actually really excited because I'm listening to Funkadelic's 1973 album Cosmic Slop. Now Funkadelic has been one of the many bands that has come out with these really crazy, innovative, creative landmarks of music. A couple things that I like about the band is just I feel like there's so many people in the band and you can hear every creative piece that each member brings to the band is so well thought out and so fun. It's fun music, man. It's really fun music and also progressive. Fresh, fun, progressive, pushing the boundaries of what rock music is. Now, a couple things that I read upon that I read on this album in preparation to listen to it is the fact that Eddie Hazel isn't on it. Eddie Hazel being the main guitarist of the couple the last couple of Funkadelic albums, pretty much since the beginning, and now he's not here. Uh, I didn't read into exactly why, but um, hopefully this doesn't take too much away from, from the music, because it, that would be very sad. <laughs> I can't really say much else on it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and listen to it. It's 35 minutes, so it's not too long, and the fucking, the album art looks, I'm in love with the album art, I feel like you know, it's giving me bitches brew vibes. But yeah, man, I'm just really excited. I can't wait to hear this. Um, and we're listening to it right now. Uh, let's uh, do this. Let's do this. Let's do Funkadelic and Cosmic Slop. Track number one, Nappy Dugout. <laughs> I dig that. I really like that. That I feel like that was really simple. A good, simple, but is this like, um, I feel like this might be, I loved that track. I love that. I love the vibe. I like that. It didn't start off crazy like all the other albums did. It's just giving me a little taste of what I'm going to be expecting. Track number two, you can't miss what you can't measure. <laughs> I feel like they stripped everything. I feel like they stripped it down to like a very focused, concrete, song structured sound. Well, that song was sick. I'm gonna add that shit into my playlist. Track number three, March of the Witch's Castle. Yes, very interesting. Um, that, uh, for a moment there, I felt like I was listening to uh, one of the filler tracks on Jimi Hendrix's 
oh my god why the fuck am i forgetting the name of that album um on Jimi hendrix's electric ladyland jesus christ something's wrong with vanity fucking i need to see a doctor i feel like i have amnesia but yeah it was a very simple um more for the mood than it is for the music this was a mood setter and it was dark dark melancholy talking about uh people returning from the war why why does war happen um just really dread dreadful track number four let's make it last Before I say what I'm gonna say, I am fully aware of the fact that Donald Glover's funk album, I forget the name of it, because I'm an idiot, um, it just makes, th hearing this makes me, I, I fully understand that the influence off of that album is based a lot off of bands like Funkadelic, but it just makes me appreciate a little more how how fucking well Donald Glover pulled that off, the voice. It sounds like Donald Glover right here, like, straight up. I that was sick. It wasn't too crazy. It wasn't a. Um, oh man, come on. What can I say? I'm not gonna fucking. It was a filler track. It was a filler track. But good song. Good song. It, it, when it comes to Funkadelic, their filler songs are still some of the best songs that are coming out out of the entire fucking rock world at this time okay uh so shit shut up track number five cosmic slop <laughs> That was beautiful. All that was beautiful. Everything, the buildup, the aggression towards the end, the fucking vibrant, vibrant sounds, the world that they just built with that song. Title song, of course, because it fucking fits the, the cover of the album so well. Um, at one point it felt like it wasn't even about the vocals anymore. It wasn't even about the song anymore. His, his vocals were being so drowned out by the freaking music in the background and it was just getting louder and louder and more sonically appealing more sonically expanding like a universe that's exactly what i wanted from this it fits so well fits so well with the covers and how much i wanted to not predict about the album <clears throat> i'm loving this album so far and i'm already halfway through track number six no compute <laughs> Oh, wait a 
come away dreaming in which I was reckless. My imagination could no longer take me there. So I slid into my copy of haberdashery and gave way to the original Joan. She screamed and said, are you asking to make love to me? I say, is pig was it for? Or are you going to play hard after all the trouble you went through to get chosen? She said, uh, no confusion. I was sick with the guilty, and she smiled in her sleep as if to say, All looks are not alike, all hoes are not a crack. That was cool. Uh, that was fun. That was kind of funny. Um, that felt like a Christmas song at one point. I was really surprised whenever it first started because, I mean, they don't make music like this. They don't make this weird uh, burlesque New Orleans style influenced rock music. Now, before I even try to think about whether or not someone has done this before, I the mo it sounded um, like Paul Simon was about to come out and like you know, sing a song. I, I just heard There Goes Ryman Simon and there's a song on there that kind of reminds me of what they were going for here, but this goes a lot harder. And to be honest, I like this, I like the idea of this a lot more than what uh, Paul Simon did on that album. And I like that this was like a spoken word with some comedic value. Uh, I love them. I love them for doing stuff like this. I love this I love their ideas, man. I love their ideas, their innovativeness, and how they just don't care. They just don't care about the expectations. They know that what they're doing is so genius that it will get accepted and it will be replayed and loved and because that's how I'm feeling about it. Track number seven, This Broken Heart. <laughs> Yeah, this fucking album kicks ass. They've taken the darkness from there's a riot going on. They've taken the soul from what's going on. And they've taken like the unexpected ominous vibe from Bitches Brew and put it here with a beautiful, beautiful flow. And I don't know what the fuck everyone's talking about. I don't know what, what I, I'm... Sorry, I, I read a couple things. I read what people were saying about this album and how it was like not that good because they compared it to Maggot Brain. Yeah, I I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to compare to Maggot Brain. But honestly, compared to Maggot Brain, this is doing a lot more for me. It's doing a lot more for me in, in the way that I feel like it's more focused. I feel like there's more, there is a better idea here. And it's been worked out very well, very perfectly. Pause right 
right there just to say um, I haven't said much about the lyrics so far about these songs, but in, in not only are they pushing the meaning of funk further and and may, solidifying themselves as the masters of it possibly, um, but also there it seemed like they're in the forefront of a sexual revolution in terms of music like. The things that they talk about here, you know, uh, seeing a lot of the pimps and prostitutes, um, shit that maybe like Lou Reed would was doing as well, like in a, in an empowering way, and especially in these times. We're talking about just a couple years after John Lennon was dragged through the fucking mud for saying that they were bigger than Jesus. So having just a couple years after that have music that's openly talking about with no shame prostitution and and sexual acts so freely and so bravely <laughs> you know All right, I'm on the last track um, And let's just start it. I'm just gonna play the last track and then I'll say what I gotta say track number nine can't stand the strain That's it. I, I fucking love this. I love the album so much, so much. I'm gonna listen to this again and again and again and again. Um, but I can tell you right now that this is, oh boy, I don't know. I don't know if I wanna say what I gotta say, but I'm liking this more than calm down a little bit maybe I'm not in the right headspace but um, I I like this a lot I think albums like this are the t kind that influence other albums in terms of artistry creative flow and of course one big thing that people might not agree with is artwork and I feel like artwork fits fucking swell on this one um and the music is amazing the music is fucking amazing every single song i i barely had anything bad to say i didn't have anything bad to say about any of the songs except maybe let's make it last but even for like i said even for a filler song funk basically funkadelic's filler songs are better than everybody else's filler songs so um, with that being said, they're songwriters. George Clinton is a songwriter and he has a group. And I feel like he's influenced by Sly and the Family Stone, especially off of There's a Riot going up. But that's it for this one. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I am very excited to hear what comes after with Funkadelic because this is beautiful, 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 beautiful album. Definitely going to be in the, one of the top 10. I don't know where it's going to be, um, but I'm feeling definitely like an eight or nine here. I'm still trying to figure that out. I need to give it a couple more listens, wait a couple weeks, see where it sets. I think the next, next album that I'm gonna be listening to, I got David Holland Quartet, Conference of the Birds. I got Larry Young, Lawrence of Newark. I got John Fahey. I think I might, I might post that one because I love John Fahey. Uh, Fela Kuti, Fela Kuti, I don't know how to pronounce his name, I'm sorry. Um, with Aphrodisiac, and then of course, the big one that I've been waiting so long to hear. The follow-up to Sly and the Family Stones, There's a Riot Going On, Fresh. I'm very excited for that. Definitely gonna post that. Definitely be around to see that. Uh, but that's it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.